So like I said, this seems to be a little bit tedious. So, okay, so great. We can add metadata for that specific method call. That's great. And that's one of the things that fulfill one of our requirements that oh, the mod call should carry some extra information. Again, however you decide to use that information is up to you. You can use that login information. You can use it as a token or to prove author, or, um, authorization, whatever you want, or to prove authentication. Um, so now let's see how we can extend this because it would be a pain if we have to use the same way of attaching metadata explicitly for each method. We want something a little bit more easier to, to use. So let's copy this, paste it, and this is going to be exercise three. And so in exercise three, if we wanted to add more information metadata to the other methods, we'll have to copy this code, go paste it here, and create some metadata before we call each one of these. And we don't want to do that. All right, not to mention as the context, since we're using the same context, we will be appending information. So this is not the right way to do it. What we want to do is not have to think about it and have the extra information or authentication information, the metadata go out on each call. And so if we come back here and we look, we see we have dial options. So, um, so we can do, for example, let's do grpc that and if we do um, credential, if we look for credential, and we can see there's credential, and this cre returns a server option. We don't want server option. Uh, this is a dial option, but this is a credential bundle, which returns a dial option to set a credential bundle for the client. This should not be used with transport credential. We already have transport credential, so that's not what we're looking for. And this is the with transport credential, which we already have. So that doesn't seem to be it. So what else is there? So when I type credential or cred, it didn't seem to have anything that we would want, except that if you do per, you will see that, oh no, we have this other option here, which is, and so if we go here with peer RPC credential, we can see that we can still use the credential at peer RPC credential. And now we can turn that into a dial option. So let's do with peer RPC credential. So what we need to do is create a value that's a credential that is of this type. So let's cut that. And let's just say that we have credential and it's of type this. So what is this type? Well, if we click on it and it loads, um, so save. So am I going to be able to import this? Yeah, there's credential. So I should be able to go to, ah, well, that's not good because I didn't do that. But anyway, let's do this. I have a, so now I click on this. Let's see if it's going to load. Ah, there we go. Okay, so this is exactly what we need. Prior credentials define the common interface for the credentials, which needs to be attached to secure information to every RPC, so such OAuth or whatever. And so you can see here, the get requested metadata gets the current requested metadata and refresh token if necessary. This should be called by the transport layer on each request. And the data should be populated in headers or other contexts. Blah, 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 blah. We can read this on. And then it goes here, there's this other method called required credential. So basically, they're just these two functions that we need to implement. So let's copy those. Now, remember when I hinted that oh, we have to implement a metadata plugin? That's sort of the thing that we, we're doing here. And so let's go back to our code. And so what we really need our credential to be then is a value that we create, which is going to be, let's call it our, uh, my default call credential. And it's going to be a class that implement, not class, uh, excuse me, a struct value, a value that implements those methods. So let's put that maybe, hmm, um, well, it's only required for the server, um, is the server that, um, the client that needs this information to send it. So let's just implement it in the client only. So let's put it here. 
Uh, we could put it in our art package, but um, since it's the client that needs only, let's put it here. And we'll call it default um, call credential. All right, that go. And there we do package main and type. We want to create a struct, so we're going to say my default. All right, so look at this API. It's very simple. It gives us a context URI, which is information about what is being called. And it gives, it says we can return a map of key value. So I would say we return a map of key value. That seems straightforward enough. So let's create a map or that method. Well, actually, this is for each of our calls. So we're not using the same thing. Before we were using auth um, key one and so on to authenticate um, the m just method on a per call basis, basically when we call it and we want to send extra information. So let's call this two, two, and let's call it another secret. That key, okay, or my secret key too. Uh, let's go, uh, that's fine. And then this is, um, some more secure data. Of course, you can see how created this is. So please do not use simple things like this. Um, so now we have another key. And so we can say key two and then value two. Now let me stop and explain exactly what's going on. What we're doing is, remember, we're creating a credential, right? By implementing that interface, a per call credential which we're going to use to create this dial option. Once we have this dial option, we're going to be able to append it to our set of dial options. So we can append this dial option. This with per call credential returns a dial option. So we have a slice of dial option. So we can append it to our dial option here as, you know, let's say default call credential. So I will call this default call credential instead. Default call credential. Default call credential, right? And so we create this guy, which is just a implementation of that interface as a value. We turn that value into a dial option, default call credential, and then we append it to our list. So now when we dial the server, we have two credentials that will we're passing as dial options. We have a TLS, which is a transport level credential, and we also have a per call credential. Now, this is complaining because it's saying that, oh, this value is undefined. Um, let's, oh, I just save and it likes it now. So let's go back here and make sure that oh, we complete the implementation. So now that we create a map, add a value to it, now we can return that map. So let's return M an error, nil error, because we don't have an error, right? Um, that is the signature of this call, is to return a map of string to string or an error. So that's it. Um, now, let's go test our code and see if we can, well, let's go back to, what about our server? So this is the client. Um, on the server, we haven't done anything. Um, so how will we know that though each one of these methods are being called with this extra um, information. So we can do the same thing that we did before. We can say, well, call a function to check our security. So we already have one function here that um, checks for, you know, the mod function to check that particular, um, see if this, this function is called with that information. So we can extend this function or we can, you know, just write a second function. So for now, I'll write a second function uh, just to keep it simple. We'll see if that actually makes it simple. So let's call it authentication two or authorize two. And this time we're looking for key two and value two. That's what we're looking for this time. And so now here in our mod function, um, where did this go? Where did that go? We'll have to do two checks. We have to do a check, and it doesn't matter the order, right? Because all that information is on the context. We'll have to do a check for 
if it has the specific thing that we want by authorize authorize function and then the next thing for authorize two. And for all our other functions, we would have to add like a call to authorize to, like to make sure that how they are authorized. Now we know they're gonna be authorized because why? Because the way we have implemented it now on the client side is we have configured the dial option so that though it can be sent out with each call, right? We already read this and it says that if you create this type of credential per call credential, that it sends it with every call. And so now let's see if that is exactly what's happening. Now, let me see, think of the easiest way that this can be done. Well, um, for those methods that, <laughs> um, let's just do this. Let's call R2. Let's just take this out, take out this true test. So basically um, the call is going to fail. And so which call is going to fail? Well, mod is going to fail and whichever other thing that I put that call on. So, and that's what makes this so confusing when you try to do it this way. So our mod call is going to fail. Yes. And then all the other methods should fail also because each one of them are going to send a key. So let's try it. So let's go back up and let's go to example three server and go build. At this point, it's getting probably a bit hard to keep track of what's going on. And example three, client, and let's do go build client. And so for the server, we can do serve. Now this is complaining that saying that, oh, this is not defined. So let's go back and see. So what did I call this? I call it credentials. So I copy this. Let's go to our client. Um, this is client three. And let's make sure that oh, we are creating the right type of, oh, we need a S. So I'll just paste that there. And so now let's build this again. Okay, cannot use DCC that as type dial option in append it does not implement dial option. Um, let's go back and see, let's verify. So, um, Oh, okay. So, right. I passed this here and this returned a dial option for me. So, um, I can get rid of this. What am I doing? I can get rid of this and put this here. All right. And so now when I build, let's clear our screen and then we do client call and the call, it calls the server and notice add, subtract, multiply. But because we're doing a check, notice it fail. The other ones, we're not doing a check, so they succeed uh, on the server side. We're specifically looking for calling this authorized function. We will have to put this on every one of our calls for them to also, um, check for authentication. And that seems to be like a burden. Somebody is going to forget it to add to one of the call, you know. Um, what if somebody don't add it to a specific function? Then you have a security hole. So let's put back our check here. So now our divide and thing call should pass. So let's do um, on the server, let's rebuild the server again. So server. And then let's run the client and you can see everything is passing now, okay?